Hello, everyone, and welcome along to the final edition this week of Betting Weekly Game Bet Match. It's a tennis podcast brought to you in association with Bet Rivers. Rivers? But Bet Rivers, your home Bet Rivers. sports. I bet Rivers. Uh, they're the ones <laughs> who pay the bills. We've got to get that right. Bet Rivers. Uh, Sean Calvert, our senior ATP Tour handicapper, is joining me to look ahead to tomorrow's final two quarterfinals in what has been a very, very good, a very, very profitable ATP Tour 1000 event in Shanghai. Sean. How are you, my friend? You good? All right, yeah. Been been better. A bit, bit of a virus floating around in the Calvert household at the minute. I'm a bit peaky, but battling through, battling through as I always do. But watching the tennis this morning, seeing Herbert Herkash, our 33 to 1 pick to win the tournament at the very, very start, through to the semi finals, one match away from a monster plus 1650 payout on the each way that Ben Rivers offered at the start. Uh, must have made you uh, feel a little bit perkier. It did, but after that first set, I had to stop watching after the first set. I don't know whether you saw the first set or any of that match, but... I did. He was... Oh, God, he was awful. That first set. He, I, I had to turn it off. As I said, I couldn't handle it anymore. He just frustrates me, Herkash. He really does. The way he played in sets two and three compared to how he played in set one, you would have thought it was Marijan that was the more experienced guy at this level. He, he was really poor. And he, as I said, I said in the show yesterday, he's got to be more... On the front foot, you know, this court does favour, as I've said before, the first strike tennis, and he's he's just pushing it around and waiting for mistakes. And you know, he's got a he's got a, if he plays like he did in sets two and three in the next round against against Corder, which we'll probably talk about in a minute, then um, then great. But if he plays like he did in set one, that's that's going to be a problem. I actually bet him after set one at plus one ten. You were brave man. Like I said, don't be a moron. Put more on. You know, if you, okay. if you're right, you have got to go in. You got to go in again. I did. I I promise you, I did. I bet him at plus one ten. I had the TV off, and you went you went completely the other way and went to back him. Yeah, I just and you were right. I just uh, thought yeah. that he, he's got the the you know the more experience, and I thought Marajan he couldn't play that poor, and Marajan played exceptionally well. Though I must admit, the first three or four he's games, good and I, I didn't think he'd maintain the level, so I got it right on that occasion. But many occasions I do get it wrong. But I did go in again. I always like to do that on a, on a fancy player who isn't performing very well and you can get like a plus money against a, an, an unseeded player or player who isn't up to, who isn't, hasn't played in that kind of situation before. I'm never one to like run away and scare. I, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down with a bang. So it's basically, you know, excuse my language, but shit All or nothing. Me. Yeah, it's shit basically. It's the, it's the polite way of saying <laughs> it's it. Exactly. It's just yeah. the way I go. So uh, I got it right that time, but uh, I, I mean, some, many times before I've got it terribly, terribly wrong, but it was good and it was good now. Obviously, he's through. He's 33 to 1. He isn't playing tomorrow. So he's matches the two matches, the two, two quarterfinals tomorrow, which we're going to speak about a little bit after. That's the early hours of Friday morning that he'll be playing his semi final on Saturday. We do know his opponent is Sebastian Corner, our nemesis this year, mm. uh, a player that we just can't read. Now, I haven't. We're filming this literally after the Ben Shelton quarter match, which is a long, tiring match, which I wanted it to go on longer on it. Seven, six, seven, six, seven, six. I wanted it to go on all the way. It was almost three hours. I mean, but but that, I wanted it to go on for another half hour. And then it would have probably helped us. I know there's a day break between us. But where we're sitting now, we've got a 33 to one pick on Herkash. We've got an 80 to one pick, 100 to one pick with Umber. And I'm just sort of looking at my calculations, and this is what I think the outright market might be as we stand now. I think Herkash will be around about a plus 250 chance to win the tournament. I think Rublev will be plus 180. Obviously, he will go favour if he gets through to the semifinals. Sebastian Corder, I believe, will be around about $3. Uh, Dimitrov will be about 550 And I've got Umber and Jarry at 16 to 1. So we've got six players in the tournament. We have two of ours who we've picked at 33 to 1 and 80 to 1. And one of them is the market leader, Herbert Herkash, at 250. Now, we're not recording a podcast tomorrow, but on these odds, I would guess that Herbert Herkash will be a very, very, very slight favour against Sebastian Corder. And Corder, will, um, it, I think it could possibly be a, a pick and match. I, I don't see Corder being favourite for the, for the semi-final. Now, we're not going to speak about tomorrow. We haven't got a podcast tomorrow. But if anyone has taken the 33 to 1 on Herbert Herkash now, what would your advice be now if those lines were what we expect? So I'm predicting that Cord would be around about minus 110 to possibly around about plus 105. That's the kind of price I would expect Corder to be for that, that matchup against Herkesh. I, I will probably be tempted to lay the each way part for sure. I, I, I'm not been impressed with Herkesh for much of this tournament. Um, but there again, Corder, uh, what can you say about Corder? He almost 
he was very, very close to to blowing a 6-1 lead, wasn't he, in that final set tiebreak? You could see it coming as well. As soon as he lost that first point from 6-1 to go 6-2, you could see his brain just frazzle. And he only just got it back. Only just. So he almost choked away another seemingly impossible position. So it's, it's a very difficult one to read, Corder, as well. You know, he's been when he's plays great, it, everything looks brilliant, doesn't it? It's so smooth. It's easy on the eyes. Got all the shots. But then the brain kicks in sometimes and it he looks awful. Um, you know, those two, I've just got the head to head just on my screen here. They played quite recently, didn't they? At the start of the year in, in Melbourne. I remember fancying Corder to win that match. He did win it in the end, but only just it's the final set tiebreak, wasn't it? I think. Um, yeah. Seven, uh, nine, seven in the final set tiebreak. Prior to that, her cash beat Corder on a, a sort of medium paced, quite a high bouncing hard court in the final of Delray beach. So, the head-to-head's pretty tight. Um, I would probably be inclined to just just take the stake back by hedging quarter, so it's a sort of no-lose situation. That's my, my sort of initial early thoughts on that. The other thought I think here, I think you're going to see an extremely high game line. I think you can see the 25 and a half, even maybe 26 and a half. I think it's going to be that high. It's, I you think, think so? Be, yeah, I do. I, I really do. I think, I mean, the serving stats for the, both of these this week, the fact that they they hardly ever break anyone, the fact they've got such a big serves and the conditions, I think we were looking about 25 and a half total games. Like that. And I wouldn't be surprised to see 26. I, I, you can't rule out there's going to be a tie break. You know, it has to, has to be a tie break in this match. I just think their games are going to be higher. I'm just looking at their stats. They've played one, two, three, seven sets against each other. Only one's been a tie break. And that was because it was a, a final set. Um, well, it was a final set tie break in the Australian name. All the others have been 6 3, 6 3, 6 3, 6 2, 6 1, weirdly which you probably wouldn't expect. Um, a quarter, again, he's, he's difficult to read because he doesn't, his serve fluctuates. If he's serving well, generally he's playing well, but he didn't he didn't serve that great against Shelton today, but he broke Shelton numerous times. Although I think Shelton's energy really left him in the second set. He, he, he felt, it looked like he had nothing left, Shelton. Then he got a second win right at the end. Um, I think it's, I think it is. I think the odds show you what this match is. All the odds will show you when the lines come out a bit, Rivers. It's, it's a, it's a pick em. It, yeah. it really is. You know, it might go your way. It might not. So my advice would just be just to be a little bit circumspect and just, just have a little bit of a hedge position on the each way. You know, you've got, you've got him at basically 16 to one to win that match, haven't you? Yeah. At the minute. So don't, don't lose it. You're in a great yeah, position. Just, to, just, just, just don't lose it. something. Get, yeah. Get, if it's not our back. Yeah. If it's not our day, it's not our day and you, you haven't lost anything. That would be my advice. Mm. Uh, and it's a pick and match. I mean, it is, is a very, very difficult to one to call. But this one is Saturday morning. It's the semi final Hercash against Corda. One thing we have to talk about before we come on both matches were played indoors today. Um, weather conditions playing a part will be tomorrow as well. I think it rains yeah. forecast for tomorrow as well. Yeah, so what, what which what favors Hercash? I think I, yeah. I think you think it favors Hercash and Corda to be honest. I think they're both. I don't think either of them will mind that at all. No, I also, I also think, I also think that was a defining match today, Herc, um, the the quarter Shelton game. It had that kind of feeling about like an American clash about two up up and coming players was such a big game, such a big match. And I feel that that, that may uh, just my sort of breakdown of the match. I think to myself, they might they might have a little bit of a lull after that match. I'm confident, Herc. quite possible. Yeah, I'm not. I'm possible. not edging. I'm, there's no way I'm. You, edging. you don't know, do you, generally? No, I'm not edging. Don't worry I, about it. I We're do if with... I feel like it's worth it. If, if I don't feel like it's worth it, then then I won't. But I think this is just a, a, a real 50-50. I might hedge in play. I, I'm, it, it, if we if we go a, a set up, then I might do it. But uh, I, just, I, just, I, th- I think I think this is going to be a pick of match all the way through to it gets to 6-6 six, six in the final set. That's the kind of match I expect. I think it's going to be very, very close. But I'll, I'll wait for an opportunity and play myself rather than take the minus 110 because if Hercash wins the first set, then I'll... I'm, I'm ruining the fact that I've met him, but I, you know, I can understand if you've got a decent position and 33 to one, you've got 16 and a half to one to win this match. I can understand why you might hedge. My strategy is not for me. I'll wait and see how they play because I think Corden might be a little bit deflated after that match. That was such a big game. The two young up and coming Americans going head to head and the flakiness of the player. I, I think He's played a lot of tennis court. a lot yeah. more than her cash has in the last sort of two, three weeks or whatever. That's, that's for sure. Maybe, feeling it a little bit physically but as I say people will see it different ways won't they some people will take your kind of more bold way um, other people might take my more circumspect way just to see, that's how you see exactly. it exactly it's, like, it's up to you but I think this is going to be an edgy one if you are involved uh, you might want to hedge it for me I do think you're going to get a better price in play on both players so I, I would believe that maybe the, the in play strategy would be my way 
But obviously, if you want to hedge your position, what a great position you're in. I think we'll guarantee money. We'll it's nice to be in a position, isn't it? What a great position, yeah. One oh, match yeah. away from a 16 and a half to one. And we could be three matches away from the ultimate dream final and the game bet match. You know, we're going to have sort of a... a, a, a a statue or a memento outside your a house. A plaque and or something. A plaque, yes. A plaque is the word I was looking for, Sean, yes. Uh, Sean <laughs> Calvert, he hit the the, first, the, the, the the winner and the runner-up at 33 to 1 and 100 to 1 in uh, Beijing. That I'd have people be... knocking on my door then and saying, well, what about Shanghai, that one that lost? Beijing, Shanghai, sorry. And I'd have a, I thought he meant outside my house. I was going to say, I'd have people knocking on my door saying, what about that one that lost it? You know, even money or whatever. Yeah, we just stick it at neighbor's house. We just put it outside their house. Make, they know I've, got, I've, no, no. I've got a neighbor who I could think I could I could yeah, do that too, yeah, actually. Yeah, we've, we've put it there. Anyway, uh, tomorrow here in Shanghai, not Beijing, as I said earlier, uh, we're in Shanghai. We have two quarterfinals, the early hours of Friday morning. And again, we have a financial interest in these as well, uh, in one of these as well. So we're going to start off with the one that we've picked. We've got Ugo and Burr. Uh, we have him at a massive 100 to 1 uh, to win this tournament. Um, I think it might have been 80 to 1 on the show. Uh, I think we only had one line, didn't we? Yeah. We only had, we didn't have hardly any prices, and that the odds were literally all we had because we had so little time to record it, didn't we? Because if you remember, the lines was, were kept back because Alcaraz was still playing. Yeah. And, and Sinner and Medvedev and all these guys were still playing in Beijing. So it took ages for the lines to come out. So. I think the Bet Rivers, I think their opening price is 200 to 1, actually. So wow. if you've got that, and I know a few people on Twitter have actually got about, I think someone said they got 300 to 1. I know. So, um, yeah, you would minimum, I think, 80 to 1 is the absolute minimum. I think a lot of people would have had 100 to 1 um, and possibly even bigger as well. As I say, the opening line was 200. So, you know, huge. Yeah, absolutely. And he's, he's two matches away from making the final and we're, we're in a good position with this position as well. Not only the position on her cash and Umber is our bet. He's uh, up against Andre Rublev. Now you would look, you would look at the rankings. I think Rublev seven C at uh, number seven in the world, Umber 34. It's got to be favored. The Russian, he is the favorite. The Russian He's minus minus two seventy five. Umber is plus two ten. The spread here is three and a half start for Umber, which does seem rather generous to me. Minus one fourteen. Rublev giving up three and a half is minus one ten, and the total here is twenty two and a half. But the head to head is a lot lot closer than those odds will suggest. Uh, they met five times before. Rublev does lead though; he leads three two. But they met last week in Beijing, and Umber won in a long match uh, seven six in the final set, and Umber also won on the grass and Halla six three seven six. So it tends to me to see the quicker it is, Umber wins. And the slower it is, obviously, Rublev has the advantage here. Now, with the roof on, with the changing conditions we've seen all week here, where do we stand on our Umber position? Are you going in confident form or are you thinking, you know, the fact the roof's on will probably suit Rublev? Or what's the strategy here? Well, I don't think we can do anything at the prices, can we? We can't hedge. It's too, there's no, there's, I don't think there's any value in that. Was Rublev 1.4 ish, minus yeah, 250? Right, minus 275, yeah. Minus two, yeah. It's not you can't hedge on that. If if you if you're talking about a hedge, I would I would potentially be thinking about if Umber serves for the match or if he's a good distance ahead. You know, then maybe just just to cover for the for the mental collapse which could happen with Umber. You know, he, he is he's a little bit flaky sometimes. Um, you know, both guys are playing fabulously well at the minute. Umber, as you said, won in Beijing in slower conditions. Um, he was three point priced up as three point four four plus two forty four that day. A little bit shorter than that now, obviously, considering he beat him a week or so ago. Um, Humbert took more of his chances that day. Five out of ten break points converted compared to five of 15 for Rublev. So he didn't really take his make the best use of his opportunities there, Rublev. Um, just looking at the head-to-head away from clay, um, so the, the matches that they've played on indoor hard grass and outdoor hard, it's still quite an advantage for Rublev in terms of the service points won and return points won totals, 105 to 95. So, you know, Humber, Rublev, should I say, has had the, the advantage as far as that's concerned. But, you know, Humber, is, is, this pick was all about backing a, a real streaky player, a real aggressive player, uh, a, a guy who's, when he is confident, he can do great things. But when he's not confident, like when it, like at Queen's Club, he can do very little, you know. And it, it's, it was about my assumption, my, my hope that, we're backing him at the right time. And so far it's, it's worked out that way because he's, he's played fabulously well, beat sits a pass, um, beat Wolf very, very easily. He'd be very, very fresh after that. I think he had changed from an hour 
on the tennis court, didn't he? It, it, it's only about 55 minutes, I think, that match. Um, he should fancy it. You know, he's, he's just beaten Rublev. He's not going to come in here thinking, oh, it's Rublev. The other thing that I would think about Rublev is that he's been in this situation before numerous, well, not numerous times, but several times that, that I can recall off the top of my head where he's suddenly been in the sort of quarter semis of a Masters 1000 and been basically the favourite because the the big guys, the Nadal, the Djokovic's, the Alcarazes or whoever have fallen or, or weren't playing. I seem to remember Miami, I think it was 2021, he was, he was in this position. I think ironically lost, lost to Hercash. Indian Wells as well, semi-final favourite to win it, lost to Fritz. And he, he did say that he, he was unable to handle the pressure of being the favourite to win the tournament. Now he's in that, basically that's that situation again, isn't he? More or less. Um, so that I think is one thing that, that Humbert will have in his favour because Humbert's not, he's got nothing to lose. Well, he's still about 16 to 1 to win this tournament, isn't he? Mm, mm. Um, so pressure wise, I think I think everything's on Rublev. If Humbert comes out and plays his absolute clean A game, plays his best tennis, there's absolutely no doubt that he can win this match. Um, Rublev's been playing great as well, but you know, Humbert's not going to be worried about this. The, the other thing to take off the head to head is that that Rublev does win more points on second serve, 53% compared to 45%. That's still away from clay. But I think that the edge that Humbert's at is he's taken more of his chances. He's taken 60% of his break point chances in those matches. Rublev's only taken 40%. So there are definite signs, uh, positive reasons, should I say, to be to be positive for, for Humbert in this match. He can do it, as there's absolutely no doubt at all he can do it. It's going to be difficult, but it's possible. I go back to my strategy again on hedging and my strategy again of being tr- overlooked. I, I, your brain is overlooking the position you have and the up, potential upside on the outright market. Mm-hmm. Now, I've bet Umber with uh, along with you, uh, 100 to 1 to win his tour. I've done exactly what you've done. I've bet, I've bet the 33 to 1 Hercash as well. So we're in a great position. What I've seen this week, right, is is I've seen a player in Umber who is a potential, he is a top 20 player on his day. Oh he's yeah, a, he's an unbelievably good serve. He struggles with confidence, and he can be really flaky. He's playing some of the best tennis of the year. And what I've seen, if I was a, a neutral to tennis, watching this tennis tournament this week, I would never differentiate from a fact that Umber is thirty-four in the world, and uh, uh, Rublev is number five in the world. So I'm looking at his handicap here and thinking, this is this guy is serving the best he's served all year, three and a half. Now it's going to be very hard to break Umber. Left big left-handed serve coming down. In quickish conditions, and I know the roof's going to be on, it's not as quick as it was earlier in the week, but it's quickish condition. Rublev worked so hard for points. The pressure on Rublev, I'd go in on the three and a half again, you know. <laughs> I would. I just I just can't see any way that, like, I want to be thinking about hedging or thinking about clouding my original judgment. I'm looking at this. Yeah, thinking, I wouldn't hedge here. No, I, I, I'm just I, thinking that three and a half Umber is a bet. I mean, you look at the matches they've played. I mean, well, how many times did they play? Let me get the headset in front of you here. Five in uh, total, four four away from clay. Well, even in clay. the even in the wins that Rublev have had, I mean, Umber took a set off him in St. Petersburg in Russia. Uh, obviously, in 2019, they first met. It was 6 4 6 4 one by four. St. Petersburg, he never covered the handicap. He lost the first set, 6 4 one by two. In Halle, Umber won. In Indian Wells, he won seven five six three. It's a lot so slower barely, there as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so he's a lot slower. He barely covered the, the three and a half there. And then he lost in Beijing. Now he's playing the best tennis he has this year. Ruben has played an awful lot of tennis. He's exhausted. There is no way. I'm actually looking at that plus three and a half at minus 114. I think it's a bet. I mean, I, I haven't got an official play for today. If you want, I'll take the official play. No, I'm not going to no, I'm not going to give the official plays. I'm just saying that... My, you can my, if you want. Don't let no, me... No, let, I just go back off. to my point all along about hedging. And my point all along about taking positions is that when we get to semifinals and quarterfinals, the first thing our our mind does as betters. We don't think about that guy could win it. I'm always seeing the positive. I think, right, we, we're three matches away from having the dream final. Other people think, oh, no, we, 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 well, it's going to be difficult. We should, we should, if he gets a big money, it, it, this, we should head to this position. I'm not saying you, Jet, you sure, but I mean, other betters who, who, I, I look at the break. You've got to look at the match as, as it is. Forget about the outright position. You've got to look at it as if you didn't have a position, yes. really. And then once you've come to the conclusion based on that, and then you act accordingly. So yeah, that's. I'm, I'm looking at this there. match. I, here I wouldn't think... hedge unless he was like one to ten, serving yeah. for the match or something. Well, I'm like looking that. at this match here and thinking the Umber price at plus two ten and the Umber price plus three and a half at minus one fourteen is much better value than betting Hercash at minus one ten to beat Corder. 
that one would be my theory. I think yeah, I definitely won't back. This Herkash one here, on what Herkash is playing poorly and got to the semi-finals. Umbez playing the the best we've seen all year through the quarterfinals against an opponent he's beaten twice. So I'm not hedging either, but I just think the Humber one here, if I if I just saw these prices and didn't have a position, I'd be betting Umber plus three and a half. I'd be betting Umber plus 210. And I probably still will. The fact that I've met him to win the tournament 100 to one is is no, doesn't cloud my judgment. And I think these prices are wrong. Anyway, that's uh, less of a strategy. I mean, you can do it. Everyone's, everyone do I think own. this is definitely one for him play. I think these prices, it's, it's not, it's no value on Rublo. I certainly wouldn't hedge at that price. There's no point. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, as I said, I think I would hedge if Humbert came, it was a real tight one and he came to serve for the match. Then I'd perhaps, I probably would hedge then if I'm being honest. I'd pro- it, 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 when he's like one to eight, one to nine, one to 10, something like that, then I would perhaps give it a go, but not, not, not at these odds. But we, we always talk some, I mean, people laugh about it and every time we talk about hedging, they put the, the, the joke I say about, you know, hedging's for guarders, which, which is, is a little bit joke. I do hedge some positions. I, I did hedge, a position the other day, I can't remember what it was now. I think I spoke, I can't remember what it was. I bet I hedged the position. Oh, it was, I think of it, anyway, I can't remember. But I hedged, but I hedged because I thought it was value. And you mm. have to hedge a position if you think what you're getting is value. Because if you're not getting the value, you, you should be doing the opposite. So I don't think, I don't think there's any value at all in Andre Rubin if at minus 275. No. And, and that, that's my theory. So no, when it comes no, to hedge, no, it's not a blind thing. I think of what I hedged in the other day. Anyway, let's move on to uh, the other quarterfinal. It's Gregor Dimitrov against Nicholas Jarry here. And Gregor Dimitrov is rolling back the years with his performance here. He's uh, obviously coming in after a big high, beating Carlos Alcaraz, the number one seed. And, uh, you know, usually what happens when you have a big win like that, you 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 you, you get in a taxi picking you up from court to the, air, the airport straight after. He's minus 245 against Nicholas Jarry here at plus 195. I, I like watching Jarry. I think he's an entertainer. Dimitrov, whether he can keep doing that form and going through the epics that he's done this week, I'm not so sure. The spread here is two and a half. Dimitrov minus two and a half is minus 130. Jarry plus two and a half is plus 102. And the total, as usual with Jarry games, is quite high. It's 23 and a half. If you look at the head-to-head, you'll be looking at that plus 195 Jarry and saying, that's a little bit for me. They've met twice before, both on clay in Geneva this year. Jarry won his straight set, 7-6-6-1. And he also played in Barcelona in 2019 when Dimitrov was at the pretty much a, a lot better position than he is now. And Jerry was a languishing lower in the rankings and uh, he won as well, Jerry there, two, six, six, four, seven, six. I quite like Jerry here at plus 195, Sean. I, I think after the fact he's had that burnout and that big win against Alcaraz, uh, I think he might think that's that's me done. But um, Jerry, very impressive what I've seen from him this year. Plus 195, I quite like that. I, th- I think when I looked, when we were sort of talking about this yesterday, we, we were chatting about, the matches and what we're going to do and whatever. And we were talking about this match that hadn't been priced up. And I, I was thinking when this was, before this was priced up, I, I would have thought that Dimitrov would have been about 1.6, 1.7. Mm. I, I can't, I can't see where this price comes from really. Other than the fact that he's just beaten Alcaraz. Did you think if he'd have beaten someone like, I don't know, say Schwartzman, Dimitrov or who, whoever in the, in the previous round, do you think he'd still be 1.4 for this no match? Way. I put in the WhatsApp group. I think I put is... in the WhatsApp group. I thought the Jack Dimitrov would be a, a slight favourite, not minus two forty five. Yeah, I thought one point seven ish. Yeah, I, I, this it, this has got to be because he's beaten Alcaraz. Surely, I can't think of anything because I'll, I'll go through the stats. I mean, and and Dimitrov again, like Rublev, he's another one that fails to capitalise on a big win. He doesn't go on and win tournaments very often, does he? Doesn't he? Doesn't win any tournament very often, let alone a Masters one thousand. I think he won Cincinnati one year, but. I don't recall him winning any anything other than that. I think he won the he won the tour finals, didn't he? One year, but a Masters one thousand, or you know, obviously, or a Grand Slam. You know, no, it just it just doesn't happen. Um, so that would immediately set my alarm bells ringing if I was thinking of backing Dimitrov in this match. The head tail, as you said, two 0 to Jerry, both on clay, um, which you know you would think would favour Jerry, but Dimitrov's gone well on clay as well. It's not like he can't play on clay. And from those two matches, the service points, one and return points, one tails. Dimitrov, 96. Jarry, 104. So quite a a decent advantage for Jarry. It's not like he's just served his way through it. He's won 4% more points on serve, which you would expect, Jarry, but also 4% more points on return, which you perhaps wouldn't expect on those two matches. I know he gets more time on the ball on the clay than he does on these hard courts, but you know that serve of Jarry's has been a, a key weapon. So there's nothing on the head-to-head to suggest 
Dimitrov should be that short. There's nothing on the, the main level outdoor hard stats for 2023 that, that suggests he should be that short either. Service points won and return points won totals. Dimitrov 104, Jarry 103. So there's nothing there either. Um, took a look at Dimitrov against big servers, that the ones I've got listed as such on my database, away from clay um, versus these big servers. Dimitrov plays a, a tie break, 0.38 tie breaks per set. He's held served 92% of the time, but he's only broken served 10.6% of the time. So he's always, always mostly required a, a tie break or two to get past these, these big serving guys. Um, I also took a look at Dimitrov's performance in this sort of price range when he's been priced up between 1.4 and 1.5, which is minus 250 and minus 200. Uh, he's actually won seven of his last nine matches, but on his career as a whole, he's only won um, he's only got a 58% win rate on outdoor hard in the price range that he is now. So if you'd have backed him in all of those, you'd have been very much out of pocket. So I don't think there's any upside on this price for, for Dimitrov for me. Uh, the tie break market is, is an obvious one, but it is of interest. Um, when I looked earlier, set one tie break was a plus 245 chance with Bet Rivers. I thought that was pretty decent, actually. Or well, if you wanted to go even bigger, Jarry 7-6, in set one is a, a seven to one chance. And that the way of thinking on that one is that Jerry's won 67% of his tie breaks this season compared to 52% for Dimitrov. So you would think if it does go to a tie break, Jerry's also won both the tie breaks they've contested. So that, that would be one be way. Bet, that could be a bet, Sean, if it, if it actually went to a tie break because the market would be making Dimitrov minus 160 to win the tie break. Yeah, and then wouldn't yeah the do it in play. Yeah, if, yeah, get, if yeah. it actually got that far, then it'd be the bet. Yeah, because Jerry obviously has the, you know that huge serve in tie breaks, and he does tend to to produce it when he needs it, which is a, a great sort of facet to have. Um, so in 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 summation, it's 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 a very very short price on Dimitrov. I say I, I I'm I'm not nor sometimes I'm wrong when I when I look at a match. I think oh it'll be this price, but not I'm not normally that far out. I, this just this just feels like an Alcaraz price to me. I, I've beaten Alcaraz, so let's let's put him in at this price. Definitely come back, Dimitrov. Um, I would definitely take either the set one tie break, even even back Jerry, any of those things. I certainly wouldn't mm. back in Dimitrov here. This these odds. Thirty six different markets available with the Bet Rivers. Head to the Bet Rivers website. You can live stream the match as well. Watch it on your tablet or your mobile phone or your computer or your laptop, whatever you want to watch it. These are the early hours uh, on Friday morning. So uh, if you get on the website, you won't have to. So click through your television channels. You can watch it. 4.30 a.m. Diego Dimitrov against Nicholas Jerry. 8 a.m. Ugo Rembert against Andre Rublev. And both underdogs, I think, here represent some value. I really do. I think if you bet them both blind, I think one of them will win. That's my opinion. Now, it could be completely wrong, but, you know. Minus... I hope they do. Because I hope the and I hope the, the one is Umber. But yeah. if, if Umber wins and then Jerry wins, I'd be very I'd be very happy with that. I think it's a good matchup for Umber against against Jerry as well. Yeah, we're 21.28 units up on the podcast this season in 2023. And hopefully we can get uh, a couple of matches to go and we could really hit those figures up to some really silly numbers. Uh, just one with the hedging. Remember, you're not one match away from disaster. You're three matches away from perfection. Use your mindset that way. Think about what we can get rather than what we what we what we're gonna what can potentially go wrong. Um, and I think there's values that are still there. Remember, there's four ways to follow us on Betting Weekly Game Bet Match. Download that podcast, Betting Weekly Game Bet Match, on your preferred podcast provider. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ring the bell. Uh, Betting Weekly Studios. Lots of great content on there. It's an international break at the moment, and uh, Sean Cavu on international break next week when he's in Antwerp. Again, all the I'll content. Call that a break. Well, you know, <laughs> A couple of days away would be nice. Uh, That's but you can, true. Get, you That's can get true. all the content away on YouTube there. Click on that. You'll be able to see all the content on this soccer and also as well the Cricket World Cup. We've got some good stuff on there. Not, not, a, not a sport that's very popular in America, but it's growing all the time. And there's a, there's a real big match tomorrow, I think, is India against Pakistan. I think that'll probably be on this year. I think that'll be the most biggest betting event on the whole oh, yeah. of the world this year. India most Pakistan. watched as well, I should most think. Most watched, biggest bet. So if you're American and you want to have a bet, India, Pakistan, uh, tomorrow be on the Bet Rivers website. Head to that on the cricket and watch our show on the YouTube channel. And obviously, you can also uh, follow us on socials. You'll see Sean in Antwerp uh, next week drinking some white beer, I'm guessing. Uh, a little bit of what? Blonde beer. Blonde beer. And is, that, is that the local? They have hundreds of different beers, don't they, in, in Belgium? Stella. Stella. 
Well, you can get that anywhere, can't you? I know, but you get proper Stella there. But you have a bit. Stella. I'm not a fan. I'm, it, I'm not a massive fan of Stella, to be honest. We'll, Do we'll. Not... Um, I, I, there's so many to choose from. Um, you know, you could you could go hog wild out there, couldn't you? It's nine percent beers and stuff. I, I could have a problem with that, but um, well, we'll see. You'll be there. Um, I, I've, I've actually, I went to the doctors. I've, my, my blood sugar levels are quite high. I've got to cut back. I've got so I've, I've, I've been stopping on what up, just beer and you know fatty foods and all kinds of stuff so the high living <laughs> I, I, just, I, uh, I went to the um i went to the pub yesterday and i had a non-alcoholic beer zero peroni zero they're quite nice now uh, years was, ago they were horrible. really nice they're actually quite it. nice i had a couple of them at the um at queen's club on the day yeah. that on the day that you weren't there actually the, yeah the, i was gonna say day. weren't the day i was there wasn't the day you were there no but this, the, the other day it was it's, it's quite it's, it's actually drinkable now in the old yeah. days it was a bit it was a bit yucky, but it's it's quite nice now. But the stick I got from my friends wasn't good. Nah. I must admit. I, Sometimes I, you got to do it. I know. Yeah, I need. I, I'm get. I'm, I'm, I'm going to the gym. I'm back tomorrow. Doing. I'm going to do forty lengths tomorrow. Try to beat the thirty. So I'm, I'm on a health kick now to get ready uh, for Christmas and the New Year. So uh, anyway, uh, good luck, Sean. It's, it's our last visit this week. We'll be back again next week, looking at back to Europe. So probably talk to you on Sunday, and hopefully, let's let's hope we can get one of these home. And if we can get the dream final, well. That'll be incredible. Give you some uh, extra spends in Antwerp. You'll be able to get the yep. you'll be able to you'll be get the, the first class ticket on the bus now. Nah, that, 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 let's not go mad. <laughs> listen, <laughs> have a great week, mate. And listen, good luck with the tennis. Thank you everyone for watching. And hopefully we can cash on tickets. Umber and we have her cash looking good. Her cash will be the tournament favourite heading into the semi final and uh, or, or the quarter finals when the market comes up. Rublev goes out, then he's the tournament favourite. Rublev wins, he's the second favourite. What a great position to be in. And remember the hedging philosophy I have. It's up to you. You know, if you want to hedge, it's entirely up to you. But for me, I think you only hedge when there's value. And I don't think there's any value here. Take care, everyone. All the best. <laughs>